and give the glory to God who is worthy of it all. Join us as we worship. Join us as we worship the King of Kings. Right here where mysteries are being revealed and we are giving honor to his name. Father, we worship you, we give you glory. You are awesome in this place, almighty God. We give you all, we give you everything we have. Lord, indeed, you are worthy. We lift up our voices and we say, Jehovah, you are holy. You are holy, there is none like you. There is none like you, mighty Jesus. There is none like you in the heavens. There is none like you on the earth. There is none like you, O oh God. We worship you this morning. We worship you, Almighty God. Amen. Mighty one, mighty one, we worship you. Mighty one, we worship you. Mighty one, mighty one, we worship you, oh, mighty one, mighty one. We worship you for I've tasted and seen your goodness and I have lived in the power of your presence and I Of your mercy and all your love. 
It always surrounds me. You alone, worthy of the highest praise. No
Take all the honor. Jehovah, we worship you. You are worth the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Very good morning to every person joining us today. Thank you for taking time to be with us this morning. And for allowing God to grant you this unique opportunity where you get to fellowship and hear the word of God. Uh, to do it very, very beautifully this morning. I want to minister this morning on the subject, um, visions are coming. Visions are coming. And allow me to... To, to acknowledge you um, and encourage you to keep sharing our videos. Today we decided to come from the Adam Repair Ministries page. And today is the first day of the month, which is August 1. August is the month of, uh, the, rather the number 8, which is the month of August, is the number of new beginnings. So let me say there's something new that's coming. Something new that's coming. Um, something new that's coming. Joel 2.28. Joel 2.28. Joel 2.28. Joel chapter number 2, verse 28. 
Joel 2.28 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. That's Joel 2.28. It shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit, says the Lord, upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Father, thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse number 1. 2 Corinthians 12, verse number 1. The Apostle Paul says, It is expedient for me, doubtless to glory, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Visions and revelations of the Lord. So he says, if I decided to glory, it is not expedient. But the things that are very important that I can emphasize for you are visions and revelations. Visions and revelations. My presentation this morning is visions are coming. Visions are coming. In my build-up to last Sunday's presentation, I think I was very prophetic and I emphasized that in this prophetic season that we are in, there is an open door and that door is called influence and impact, impact and influence. And in the door called impact and influence, one of the things that God does emphasize is that you are not influencing or impacting non-living things. You are impacting living beings. You are impacting living beings. You are impacting life-giving forms. That's what you're impacting. You are impacting beings. You are impacting life-giving forms. It just cannot be impact unless um, it's coming specifically from the realm of God. And I've got to emphasize that. Impact that has its origins from the realm of God. In other words, when you impact, it becomes impact and influence. Influence for the kingdom of God. It has to be influence for the kingdom of God. Um, thank you, Tafuma. Just hold on for me. It has to be impact for the kingdom of God. Um, and what that does is that influence and impact for the kingdom of God helps the advancement of the agenda of God. It helps the advancement of the agenda of God. The Bible is very clear that you and me are the salt of the earth. We are called to be the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its flavor, it is thrown away. And it is not worthy to be used. It's actually thrown into the street and trodden by men underfoot. In the very same manner, your influence for the kingdom of God has been guaranteed as long as you remain connected to God. Bear with me and just walk with me for a minute. Your influence is guaranteed as long as you remain connected to God. Now, how is you and me going to remain connected to God? It's an important question. 
we remain connected to God. According to Joel 2.28, when he has poured out his spirit on all flesh, when he has poured out his spirit on all flesh, that's how we remain connected to God. And let me go deeper with it a little bit. Electricity works this way. Electricity is generated uh, from different sources. Currently there is hydro, there is solar, there is, um, I think, coal, I don't know what they call it. Um, all these generate electricity. In Zimbabwe, we have the Wange Colliery and the, um, the, the Kariba, where electricity is generated from. Once it is generated, once it is generated, it is then distributed. It's distributed throughout people's households, uh, industries. Uh, it's distributed into any place that needs electricity, including the farms as well. For the person who is at their household, at their house, in this particular case, let's say they stay in Mabvuku. A person in Mabvuku will have the source, or rather will have electricity that is coming from the source. Let's use the Kariba power station. They have electricity coming from Kariba power station coming to their house in Mabvuku. Another person who is in another place, let's pick out maybe Borodo. A person in Borodo has electricity coming to them from Kariba right to their house. If the person in Borodo does not pay the electricity, and the one in Mabvuku pays the electricity bill, the one in Mabvuku still has a consistent supply, and the one in Borodo does not have electricity anymore because they're going to cut him out, and that person is not going to have electricity. And so, as long as the one in Mabvuku has paid their bill, they remain connected to the very source of where the electricity is coming from. In the very same manner, with God, with God, you and me are connected to God the Father. In other words, to the very headquarters of God. According to Joel, by the pouring out of the Spirit of God into all flesh, so my connection with God, the fullness of my connection with God, is that I, I am or I have the person of the Holy Ghost in me. Uh, the Apostle Paul says in Galatians 4, 6, which has been a favorite scripture for the past week. He says, because you are sons, God has sent forth into your hearts the spirit of his son, whereby he cries, Abba, Father. And so I have the Spirit of God in me that testifies that I have a Father in heaven. And so when he cries, Abba, Father, in my spirit, I then also echo the same. And then I cry out, Abba, Father. So then, as long as I remain connected to him by the working of the Holy Ghost in me, I want you to know I will have influence. And my influence then has impact because it is influence that's coming directly from the realms of God. Whatever God gets an opportunity to step into, God has a tendency of impacting. <laughs> Whatever God is given an opportunity to participate in, God has a tendency of impacting. Impacting, impacting, impacting. Watch me carefully now. In, in, in Joel, he says, your young, your sons and daughters, number one, they shall prophesy. Number two, they shall dream dreams. Number three, your young men shall see visions. So prophecy, dreams, and visions. And all these are given as distinctive uh, categories or expressions of the one spirit of God. These are separate manifestations of the Spirit of God. So some shall prophesy, some shall dream dreams, and then some shall see visions. We may all prophesy, we may all dream dreams, and we may all see visions. 
depending on what expression comes our way. And so Adam Rupere in his lifetime will prophesy. You dream a dream and then you see a vision. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. You will prophesy, you will dream dreams and you will see visions. It's very good. It's very good. Wait for me. Come in. Wait for me. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, the apostle Paul says, Now, it is expedient for me doubtless to glory. There is a place of glory I can come to. However, the things I would rather glory in are visions and revelations of the Lord. Some time ago, a couple of friends of mine came to my office to see me. And in a joking manner, uh, they said, I'm not good, you're doing very well. Well, I said to them, I don't know what you say, what you mean by doing very well. But I would rather not glory in what you're seeing here. I would rather glory, and I took out a couple of my books, and I said, I would rather glory in these. Because these are weightier and more permanent than the jacket I'm wearing right now. And so the Apostle Paul is saying the same thing. That I would rather not glory in the things that are material that you see now. But there are places I would rather invite you to where I would have you come and glory with me. And in the place of that glory, it is the place of visions and revelations. When you have visions and revelations, I want you to know you are participating in the glory of God. When God allows you to have visions and revelations, he is inviting you to a place of glory. Every vision is a manifestation of the glory of God. Every revelation is a manifestation of the glory of God. Watch me now. Watch me now. Let's go to Hosea 12 verse number 10. Oh, I'm going to preach in about 20 minutes from now. Hosea chapter number 12 and verse number 10. Oh, it's, the, it's, it's another month. It's new beginnings. We'll sit on the couch later. <laughs> Hosea 12 verse number 10. I have also spoken by the prophets. This is God speaking. God says, I have spoken by the prophets. And I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So the ministry of the prophets is that they speak on behalf of God. In other words, as the prophets are speaking, God is actually speaking. And let me just throw in something there because I know Teddy was listening very well. The prophetic ministry is not just utterances. They are songs of prophecy that are released. So God speaks through a song of prophecy. He speaks through a song of prophecy. And so there are certain songs in certain seasons that when they are dropped into our spirits, it's as though we have heard this song before. There is a word that is preached. It's as though you've heard this word before. It's not a new word coming to you. It's like I've been here before. I've been experiencing this before in my life. It's because God is speaking by the prophets. <laughs> I have multiplied visions. And so through the same ministry of prophets, God multiplies visions. Oh, in the month of August, it's voices and visions or visions and voices. I prophesy there is a multiplication of visions. Visions are coming. <laughs> oh, I said visions are coming. Visions are coming. I prophesy a multiplication of visions. Uh, you might be sitting in your house uh, and it's as though you're about to have a cup of coffee or some green tea. Uh, but as you're just sitting on that couch, uh, visions are going to come. God is going to multiply visions and voices. In the past week, from Pastor Matthew there was an emphasis on voices but we're getting into an emphasis on visions and so you will experience visions I prophesy in the name of Jesus visions are coming uh, visions are coming visions are coming and then he says and used similitudes similitudes are pictorial representations of something pictorial representations of something then he says by the ministry of prophets 
And so one of the qualifications of a prophetic ministry is when God allows you now to begin to have visions. Uh, you cannot be a prophet and God not allow you to experience visions. And let me just throw in something in the mix uh, and say that when God is inviting you into the prophetic ministry, he calls you or he announces himself through visions <laughs> i heard the lord say to moses and aaron and miriam uh, he says if they be a prophet among you <laughs> i the lord will make myself known unto him in a vision in other words i come to announce myself in the visions the fact that visions are coming to you is a sign that God is inviting you to the prophetic ministry oh listen to me this morning there are prophets being raised there are prophets being invited by God and this invitation is on the invitation of visions visions are coming oh I said visions are coming Ooh, I feel it today Hang in. Watch me carefully. Watch me carefully. Watch me carefully. There are seven types of visions. I want to major on the visions somewhere along the way. Let me show you seven types of visions. Vision number one is visions of the night. Visions of the night. Vision number two, visions of God. I want to emphasize on visions of God today. Visions of peace. There are visions of peace. There are visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. Talk to me, Holy Ghost. There are visions of the head. Visions of the head. Then there are visions of the dream. Visions of the dream. Then there are night visions. Let me give you those quickly. Visions of the night, visions of God, visions of peace, visions and dreams, visions of the head, visions of the dream, and then night visions. Visions of the night, Genesis 46 verse number 2. The Bible says, And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, here am I. Visions of the night occur in night seasons. When the seasons of life become night. And these are difficult times in life. Where God just gives you a vision of the night. Uh, most of the times, these are birthed in moments of struggling. Uh, I've been there before in my life where life was tough and heavy and I didn't know what to do and in those moments I gave birth to certain visions uh, you must never despise moments of obscurity and you must never despise persecutions when they come uh, you must never despise difficult moments in your life because they have an ability to give birth to something uh, the scripture is clear that weeping may endure for a night but uh, we know that we know that we know that we know that joy comes in the morning uh, it is also true that a woman in labor is in a difficult moment she's in a night season and usually in those night seasons they don't know what's going to happen but we know that in those moments a baby will most likely come out of that and so she may be in pain now but I want you to know when the night or the dark season comes to an end oh there is a baby that's coming out of that Paul and Silas were in Philippi. It was a night season thrown into the dungeon and right into that very same moment. Bible says they began to sing praises unto God. It was a night season in the midnight cry, in the midnight watch. They began to sing songs unto the Lord and doors and jail gates were opened unto them in that night season. They gave birth to a dimension of the miraculous in 
the night season. And so I want you to know if you go through a difficult season in your life, oh baby don't cry. I want you to know that there are visions of the night that are coming out of that. When you go through difficult moments in your life, oh my boy don't weep. Just know that God is giving you an opportunity to give birth to visions. The Bible says they hung him on a cross. It was just before the Sabbath day and they took him down after he had given up the ghost. He was in a night season for three days and three nights. He was in a night season but baby he was giving birth to a church that is the church of the living God where the gates of hell shall not prevail against this thing and so in the visions of the night I want you to know that you are going to give birth to something the Bible says and God spoke unto Israel in the visions of the night I prophesy in your life God is about to speak to you in the visions of the night he said I am a yada oh Shakina Kadibi Yantala God is about to speak to you in the visions of the night God is about to visit you in the difficult moment maybe you lost money last month but it was a night season God was getting ready to appear to you you lost something last month God was getting ready to appear to you I prophesy the heavens are about to visit you Shana oh it's coming baby it's coming it's coming it's coming i said visions are coming i said visions are coming oh visions are coming whether the devil likes it or not visions are coming in the month of august visions are coming up when i get to the third of august visions are coming up when i get to the seventh of august visions are coming up i prophesy new beginnings visions are coming Oh, oh, watch me, watch me, watch me, huh? I said, watch me, watch me, watch me. Huh? According to Ezekiel 13 and verse number 16, there are visions of peace. Huh? Visions of peace. Huh? The Lord says to Ezekiel, tell these prophets uh, to wit the prophets of Israel prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which say and which and 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 which see visions of peace for her and there is no peace says the Lord now I want you to catch me here these prophets were so desirous of peace and they began to say we see visions of peace and God says oh I'll tell them the honest truth there are no visions of peace but it's not to say that visions of peace don't exist he's saying in this season they want visions of peace but they are no visions of peace and so what he's simply saying to you is this visions of peace exist in your life now I pray in this month of August if there was chaos in July if there was confusion in the month of June I prophesy visions of peace oh yes visions of peace are visions of prosperity visions of peace are visions of advancement visions of peace are visions of the blessing of the Lord visions of peace are visions of promotion I prophesy now on Talika Dibiana Mataya visions of peace in your life I know you're listening to me and I say amen Daniel 1 verse 17 Daniel 1 verse 17 uh, watch me hang in there we're coming to the visions of God in a minute I'm just laying a foundation as you go then Daniel 1 verse number 17 as for these four children God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and Daniel had understanding <laughs> Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams so they are visions and dreams joined together the bible says 
Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. Listen to me very well. When the visions and dreams come, they're not going to be confusing anymore to you. But you will have understanding. The word understanding is the word shama. That word shama speaks of spiritual intelligence. Daniel had spiritual intelligence in visions and dreams. When they see you this month and they tell you their visions and dreams, you have spiritual understanding to interpret their visions and dreams. Nothing shall be confusing to you. God has given you understanding of visions and dreams. I am of the Daniel tribe. I am of the tribe of Daniel. I have understanding of visions and dreams. I am of the tribe of Daniel. I have spiritual intelligence in visions and dreams. I am of the tribe of Daniel. I come from the same dimension of the prophets as Daniel. In other words, I have spiritual intelligence to know visions and dreams. Oh, bring on the hard sentences. I understand visions and dreams. Bring on the dark sentences. I understand visions and dreams. I have the spirit of the Lord on the inside of me. He gives me access to understand visions and dreams. I prophesy in this month you are understanding visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. I said visions and dreams. I said visions and dreams. I understand visions and dreams. Uh, let me move on to visions of the head. Daniel chapter number four, verse number five. Visions of the head. I saw a dream which made me afraid. The thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me <laughs> oh yes obviously this is Nebuchadnezzar crying in his life and he's saying I was on my bed I saw visions that made me very scared and I saw dreams that were very difficult and confusing to me uh, the visions of my head troubled me oh but thanks be to God I am not like Nebuchadnezzar no visions shall trouble me oh yes the visions of my head shall not trouble me what are the visions of my head these are the pictures I pulled down from the realm of God in my place of creativity I am a creative being I give birth to visions of my head oh yes I have a creative force in me oh that causes me to play songs I've never played before it causes me to write books I've never written before I'm about to preach sermons I've never preached before I'm about to bake cakes I've never baked before. I'm about to do new things that I've never done before. I'm about to create new inventions that I've never created before. These are the visions of my head. They don't trouble me. They're not scary or frightening. But they are things I'm about to show to the rest of the world. There is a generation that's coming that's about to have visions of their head. They are visions visions of the head they are visions of the head there is a creative force in my oh yatana kataya imanto lidibikina katonta mendo lidani katuina makaya i'm about to see as god sees ah the terrace kanaka nazi i'm about to see as god sees the heavens are rending open over me i am seeing the visions of god and they are visions of my head oh visions of my head I say visions of my head alright let me come to the visions of God and we preach it and go home there are visions of God 2nd Chronicles 26 verse 5 2nd Chronicles 26 verse 5 oh I missed shouting into this microphone you know 
Second Chronicles 26 verse 5. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah. Who had understanding in the visions of God. <laughs> oh yes. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Every pastor must have this verse written in their heart. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah. This Zechariah had spiritual intelligence in the visions of God. So it tells us that they are visions of God. Ezekiel 1 verse 1. We're coming back to Second Chronicles in a minute. Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the fifth month, as I was among the captives by the river Sheba, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. I like this one very well. Ezekiel by the river Sheba and among the captives. Oh, we're going to preach it in a minute. And the heavens were opened and he saw the visions of God. One more scripture. Ezekiel 8 verse number 3. Ezekiel 8 verse number 3. Ah, that's about to get good here. That's about to get good in a minute. And he put forth the form of an hand. And took me by a lock of my head. And the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven. In other words, I'm suspended between earth and heaven. It's a spiritual dimension. And brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. To the door of the inner gate that looks toward the north. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoketh to jealousy? Yeah. Let's preach it now and go home. Uh, so Second Chronicles is very clear uh, that he began to seek God in the days of Zechariah. In the days of Adam Rupert, if I can say, we are going to begin to seek God. God. I see it written on Herald on the front page. The president of Zimbabwe in the days of Adam Rupere began to seek God. And this Adam Rupere had understanding of the visions of God. He had spiritual intelligence in the visions of God. Oh, in the days of Tanakam Tero, they began to seek the Lord. This Tanakam Tero had understanding of the visions of God. They had spiritual intelligence in the visions of God. In other words, they could see the visions of God. They could discern the visions of God. They could understand the visions of God. They had spiritual intelligence in the visions of God. They saw the visions of God. And the Bible says, as long as they sought the Lord, God made them prosper. As long as you're going to seek God, visions are coming up. Visions are coming up. Visions are coming up. If you wake up in the morning and you go to the place of prayer, visions are coming up. When you are in your house and you are talking to the Lord, visions are coming up. Listening to your song, singing along those songs, visions are coming up. As you are praying in your office in the midnight hour, visions are coming up. As you are reading the word, studying the scripture, scriptures in the midnight hour visions are coming up visions are coming up whether the devil likes it or not visions are coming up visions are coming up visions are coming up there are visions of god 
Thanks be to God for the visions of the night. Thanks be to God for visions and dreams. Thanks be to God for the visions of my head. But they are visions of God. Visions of God. I am seeing in the dimension of God. I am participating in the dimension of God. Visions of God. Visions are coming. I say visions are coming. Whether the devil likes it or not, visions are coming. I prophesy. Visions are coming. Visions are coming. Pastor Matthew, visions are coming. Evangelist, visions are coming. Visions of God. The visions of God. Oh, shut up. Visions are coming. I say visions are coming. Thanks be to God for the visions are coming. Visions are coming. You want us to know who we are. That is, you want us to know who we are. Matenga no zarurwa. You want us to know who we are. The heavens are opened. Visions are coming. Watch me now. Oh, I said, watch me now. Ezekiel chapter number one and verse number one. It came to pass in the 13th month, uh, in the 13th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day. Can I rephrase that and put it into Adam Rupere contemporary English? It came to pass in the year of the Highland, in the eighth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was by the river, as I was among the captives by the river Sheba, I was in a difficult space. I was by the river Sheba. Uh, I was in a difficult moment, uh, but I was by the river Sheba. I was in a tough place uh, by the river Sheba. I heard uh, the writer in Psalm 126 say, uh, By the rivers of Babylon, by the rivers of Babylon, there we wept uh, when we remembered uh, Zion. Uh, and our captain said unto us, sing unto us one of the songs of Zion. And we said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? But before that, the Bible says, they hung their harps. Oh, the mistake they made was to hang their harps by the river sheep. Because by the river sheep, God's about to do something by the river keeper. God's about to open the heavens. So don't stop singing by the river sheep. Don't stop praising God by the river sheep. Don't stop celebrating God by the river sheep. Don't stop dancing to God by the river sheep. Don't stop praising the Lord in a captive moment because Ezekiel 1 says whilst we were by the river sheep the heavens were opened up as he was singing praises and worship the heavens were opened up as he was playing the keyboard the heavens were opened up as she was singing songs to God the heavens were opened up when the heavens were opened up the Bible says I saw visions of God visions of God visions are coming that if visions are coming up uh, when you sing a song to the Lord, uh, visions are coming up uh, when you play your harp. Uh, visions are coming up uh, when you play the guitar. Visions are coming up uh, when you dance to the Lord. Uh, visions are coming up uh, when you praise the Lord. Uh, visions are coming up. Uh, I prophesy. Visions are coming up. Uh, the heavens are opened. The heavens are opened. Visions are coming. Oh, yes. Uh, let's wrap it up to Fuma now. In Ezekiel 8 and verse number 3, the Bible says, And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of my head. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the 
the visions of God to Jerusalem. Oh yes, to the door of the inner gate that looks towards the north where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoketh to jealousy. In other words, I was lifted up by my spirit. I was carried up by my spirit. Oh, thanks be to God. I am going to be lifted up. The Apostle Paul says, I come to visions and revelations. I know of a man who was caught up in the third heavens, whether in body or out of body. In other words, he was carried up by his spirit. Oh, yes. It could have been an out of body experience. I believe his spirit man was carried up out of him. I remember that year. It could have been 2010 or maybe 2009 or maybe 2008. I was lying on the bed, sharing a bed with my brother. I remember very well, round about 2.15 a.m. in the morning, just coming from a 11 to 2 a.m. prayer meeting that I had been on my own, lying on that bed, my spirit was pulled out of me. It was a frightening experience. I remember waking up and going to kneel down on my knees and I said, oh Lord, forgive me if I have sinned. Little did I know I was being carried up by my spirit between the heavens and the earth in other words he was inviting me to the visions of God he was inviting Adam repair to the visions of God some of you listening to me tonight ah, this very morning ah, there are visions of God that are coming your way I prophesy he will lift you up by your spirit visions of God I prophesy a lifting by the spirit visions of God I prophesy a lifting of the spirit visions of God I prophesy a lifting of the spirit visions of God the Bible says the Bible says and he carried me to Jerusalem in other words I am going to the Holy Land I'm going to the holy place I am going to Mount Zion to the place of God's worship where God designated worship in the visions of God you are going to experience worship at a level you've never experienced before come on Tephuma, let's do this I said in the visions of God you are going to experience worship at a level you've never experienced before the heavens are open i am seeing the holy of holies the heavens are open i'm seeing the throne of god the heavens are open i'm seeing the golden altar the heavens are open. I'm seeing the golden center. The heavens are open. My prayers are ascending to God. The heavens are open. I am seeing the throne of God. Draw boldly before the throne of God. Draw boldly before the throne of grace. Draw boldly. Let's worship God. Draw boldly. Let's burn some incense. Draw boldly. Let's offer incense. Draw boldly. Let's praise the name of the Lord. Draw boldly. Let's worship God. The heavens are open. I'm seeing the throne of God. The heavens are open. Visions are coming. Visions are coming. Visions are coming. Visions are coming. I say visions are coming. Visions are coming. Visions are coming. Visions are coming. Whether you like it or not, visions are coming. Whether the devil likes it or not, visions are coming. Oh, I prophesy as an apostle and a prophet of God, visions are coming. It's not on me, it's on him. The heavens are open. 
Matenga kasarua. Matenga kasarua. The heavens are open and visions are coming. <laughs> oh, I say visions are coming. In Daniel 7 and verse number 13, the Bible says, I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man. Oh, I, uh, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him the heavens are open visions are coming one like the son of man oh i prophesy today i prophesy today the visions are coming the visions are coming you have won the victory hallelujah say hallelujah you have won it all for me death could not hold you down you
to you today. We yield ourselves to you. I thank you for every person that's connected with us today, Lord. Continue to bless them and favor them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We say amen. God bless you so much for taking time to be with us. I want you to prepare an offering to give. The financial details are appearing on the screen any minute from now. I want you to prepare an offering to give. I want you to prepare an offering to give. This is the first month. Uh -uh, this is the eighth month. The first day of the eighth month. Give significantly to the Lord as a new beginnings offering. New stuff is coming your way. New stuff. New stuff is coming your way. New stuff is coming your way. New stuff is coming your way. At the end of this meeting, um, we're going to have a spontaneous worship later on, maybe around about 1 o'clock, 1.30. Um, just keep checking with our social media handles and you will be blessed. You will be blessed. How do you do that one? Jesus has turned my life.
Jesus believers for every gift that's been given. Lord, we pray that you sustain them, supply more for their lives. Father, we thank you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's meet again uh, tomorrow morning for the prayer meetings as well. Bye-bye.